according to media reports. O'Neill Ricardo Thomas, more popularly known as Footer Hype, has been detained for over three weeks at the Chrome Service Processing Center in Miami, an immigration holding facility, as he remains in limbo regarding his immigration status. Since the story broke that Futa was detained by officials over his admissibility status after he arrived at the Port Everglades seaport aboard the Independence of the Seas from Falmouth in Jamaica on Saturday the 14th of December, I wanted to know what could have led to this and through a little research, I have formulated an opinion. However, before I proceed, let me hasten to say that the information in this video is not legal advice and should not be taken as such. It is purely for informational purposes based on research. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! According to reports out there in conventional and on social media, Futa was married to an American citizen and had obtained his conditional two-year residency green card. Word on the street, however, is that his wife had divorced him during the two-year conditional period and that cancelled his status as a conditional resident. I cannot confirm this to be true. However, I was further puzzled by a later news report that Futa appeared before an immigration judge and was remanded in immigration custody. Something in this story was just not adding up. For if his conditional status was cancelled and he was no longer admissible to the US, why was he not put on the next flight back to Jamaica, as is the case when someone is denied entry to the United States? To further deepen the mystery, why did the immigration judge not order his removal, but instead remanded him to continue the detention? I needed answers, and so I turned to a source that I know would likely be able to explain some of this to me. In approaching my source, I was careful not to mention Futa and this specific case since I knew that it would have been improper. Furthermore, I knew she would not have been at liberty, nor would she have discussed someone's specific case with me. So instead, I asked hypothetical questions to get hypothetical answers based on the clarity I sought. My first question was, what happens when an American marries a foreigner and petitions for the foreigner to gain US residency? She explained that when an American marries an alien and petitions for that alien to become a legal resident, the alien, if approved, receives a temporary conditional green card for a period of two years. Prior to the expiration of the two years, but before the card actually expires, the couple must file to have the temporary conditions removed. Once this is successfully done, the alien spouse will receive his permanent green card, which is renewable every 10 years. Failing to file the necessary papers or if the marriage is dissolved before the temporary conditions are removed can lead to the alien being out of status and become deportable, except in cases where the alien spouse has documented proof of abuse by the American spouse. She further explained that if the alien spouse was to travel outside the US while out of status, he or she would likely have inadmissibility issues upon returning to the US port of entry. Naturally, my next question was, what if someone is found to be inadmissible after arriving at a port of entry? What would likely happen to that person? And the answer was, the individual would most likely be denied entry and return to the country of origin. At that point, I turned to asylum seekers and asked, if a person is deemed inadmissible at a port of entry, could that person ask to be granted asylum at that point and what would be the process? She explained that an asylum seeker at a port of entry will be detained by immigration and then refer to the asylum officers who will schedule an interview with the individual to assess the validity of the asylum claim. They would also be given a chance to put their case to an immigration judge. And at that point, if they are unsuccessful, they would be placed in deportation proceedings. I specifically asked these questions so I could better understand the stories that were being reported in the newspapers. And based on those answers, I am of the opinion that Futa's case may very well be an application for asylum in the United States. 
teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.